This is a film directed by Clint Eastwood telling the story of political manoeuvre from the then newly appointed President of South Africa, Nelson Mandela. Starring Morgan Freeman and Matt Damon, the South African rugby team it centres around is more than just a sports team but a symbol of the racial divide within the country. Mandela understands the importance of this and, through his inspiring leadership, sets out to use this team to begin building bridges of trust throughout the nation's people. Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Mate Night, the hottest up and coming location for movie reviews, interesting stories and provocative questions. This is episode 28, Invictus. You are hosted by myself, Jambo, and the superfluous, wow. the gratuitous and the disorientated upside down teaspoon, it's Fred. Su superfluous meaning... Not so, totally so, necessary, so I think. Service requirements. Yeah, but it sounded <laughs> really good. <laughs> it did. <laughs> it sounds yeah, like I'm... I reckon sneak that one in a few rungs down there. Yeah, maybe yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe yeah. don't do the first adjective you do is, we don't need him here. Yeah, and also <laughs> pause on and it. Also, and also the man who is not necessary. All right, well, now, as everybody obviously knows at this point, here at Mate Night, we're on a mission to become film critics. Mm -hmm. With that in mind, we thought we'd begin by ranking every film ever made. So, today, <laughs> we start. will be answering three questions. What is the film? Why is it important? And most importantly, what score does the patented Mate Night Machine give this flick? The, the Mate Night Machine. Oh, oh the Mate Night Machine. Never wrong. Unstoppable, baby. <laughs> Let's kick things off with a gut reaction score okay. each. This is a truly subjective score of enjoyment, which will be used within the formula to help determine the final ranking at the end of the episode. Fred, are you ready? Freddy is ready. Okay, so... On the count of three, I think that you went first last. Correct, yeah. Amundo? Yeah. Oh, so, uh, count me in whenever you are ready. Three, two, one. 7.8. 7.0. Okay, so, for those who are interested, we have already recorded an episode of this, but due to certain technical difficulties that I won't go into, we are just going to re-record this one and just go over kind of what we felt about the film, what we mm -hmm. think made it good, what we think held it back. It's spoiler-free, mainly discussion at the, at the start, and maybe we'll go into a bit. We're going to be spoiler-free. We will be spoiler-free. We can't say spoiler-free mainly because that's not very useful. Sorry, for sorry. <laughs> at the start, we will be spoiler-free. We'll tell you when spoilers come coming We may in. have right. some spoilers later. Morgan Freeman. Okay, this was really the, the biggest centre of the, the sort of discussion for a good chunk of last time. Um, so Morgan Freeman stars. He plays Nelson Mandela. Now, Mandela has been on record as saying that Morgan Freeman is the only person he would ever want playing him. Mm -hmm. Now, I believe that Idris Elba did do That's right. Mandela. And you've watched both now, correct? And I don't think Mandela was dead at that point. Okay, so that is interesting. Yeah. So, I remember you saying last time that you certainly held a bit more appreciation for... Elba. Elba. But could you just kind of walk us through how you felt about Morgan Freeman so in this So, I role? had one gripe, which I, I... Upon reflection... Yeah. I don't feel as strongly about as I sure. did. Sure. That gripe was Morgan Freeman is so recognisable as Morgan Freeman and he's playing Nelson Mandela who in and of himself is a an iconic figure and so it, I felt it, it marginally detracted mm -hmm. from what was supposed to be Nelson Mandela. Some um, biopics that I've enjoyed in the past have had smaller actors go up and play portray those those characters having said that you know you have had very successful ones i mentioned on last episode sorry i mentioned on our first attempt at recording this gary oldman as winston churchill which mm. obviously gary oldman's a, a massive actor but he's, he's not quite morgan freeman who is like yeah. just a titan in terms of recognizability yeah. so it became quite hard for me to dissociate which wasn't as much of an issue for you Definitely not, yeah. There were moments, certainly, when they put Morgan Freeman in original footage that bothered me a bit, and that kind of really then started to... It jarred me at the beginning. Yeah. Um, and I absolutely get what you mean. But I was able to let go of it within a certain sure. period of time. And one of the things I liked most about this film was the portrayal of Nelson Mandela. Like, top ten character. Like, <laughs> he's just... <laughs> Uh, in terms, of, I don't know. Are you saying like top ten character, like cinematic? Or? Okay, me. I I don't know if I'd be prepared to make such a huge co uh, statement on yeah, it. Okay. But 
I mean, one of my favourite characters. Yeah, and obviously, it is a portrayal. I, I was, like, separating that entirely when we first spoke and yeah. saying, that's all Mandela and no Freeman, which is so unfair. You mentioned when we originally spoke that you felt like Freeman brought a real playfulness to the character, which is inc- yeah. is very true. <laughs> he, he brings a certain gentle charisma that, yeah. that is, I think... I would certainly find incredibly difficult to do. If someone said play Mandela Jumbo, <laughs> obviously there are certain difficulties I would I would face quite quickly. But the way that he can command a room whilst also being so gentle is just absolutely beautiful to watch. For sure. And to be honest, like the gripe I have is is diminishing in my mind when I think of it and how you put it. You're right. He brings a real real gentle yet powerful and respectable demeanor to the character mm. um minor things then is it's morgan freeman mm. and i took it and i still can't get beyond that and maybe my ideal version of someone portraying nelson mandela is like an unknown to me yeah or morgan freeman but it's his morgan first freeman, role but it's not actually yeah, <laughs> morgan yeah, yeah, freeman, yeah. Really. these are this undiscovered person yeah, yeah it's freegan mormon <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have as much of an issue with that. <laughs> Last time I kept trying to say, what was it? Nels Goodman. Nels Goodman. Nels Goodman. Nels Goodman. Nels Goodman. Nels Goodman. So, yes, Nels Goodman as an entity is a bit, <laughs> bit, was a tiny bit jarring, but is embodiment of the man that is Mandela. Yes. Is clearly why I enjoyed the film. <laughs> so, Absolutely, yeah. So I, I Beautiful can't on complain. the page, beautifully portrayed. Yeah. And just unfortunately, and I'm sure you're not going to be the only one, you do know it's Morgan Freeman for yeah, a lot yeah. of it. Like, And some people will feel that more than others. I was able to sort of immerse myself eventually. Um, but that is by no means, and correct me if I'm wrong, you are not saying that this is a problem with Mandela's performance. Mo- See, Morgan Freeman's performance. Oh, well, that's how fucking good it was. <laughs> I think that also was something that undermined my argument last time we recorded this, was I kept trying to say it. <laughs> they kept calling Morgan Freeman Mandela and Mandela Morgan Freeman. That's how good he was. Yeah. yeah. And so my, my point originally <coughs> was around Matt Damon. I preferred him. So what did we like about Matt Damon? So his accent is, is, is better. And for the Definitively record... Definitively better. I've got a South African neighbour whom yeah. I asked, what did you think of the film? I didn't prompt him. And the only initial comment that he made was, I was really impressed by the accents. Damon does a really good South African mm. accent. Uh, F- Freeman, you can hear it going a bit. Now, Freeman gets to do a Mandela impression, so that can help. But even so, you can hear the Americans yeah. slipping in a few times. Um Damon's just, I mean, what a guy. Oh, we had an, uh, we, we, one of our d- um, half segments last time was about him being Hollywood's nicest person in the world. Look, here's the thing with Damon, right? He is not the nicest person. He just seems to be the most real person the most, to me. He's most just, likeable? Yeah, like I, I like him more than people who you would say is the nicest person in Hollywood yeah. because it's not like he's trying to be this golden angel. He is just so likeable and just so normal like i just want to be his friend yeah yeah you see him in films uh you and you think he does an amazing job of them he's an oscar winner but then you also see him in interviews and he's just so incredibly humble and articulate yeah and eloquent and and he i mean he shot to popularity at a very young age Mm. and it's not like it's turned him into this mega star idiot he is just a real human being yeah but I've, much better than most of them but better than all of us <laughs> <laughs> he is like one one of the best people yeah. Yeah. in the world goodwill hunting is one of my favorite films and yeah and, he, and it's like but in no hunting. small part because of him in that in the way that he plays that role he said something i mean every interview i watch with him just makes me like him more because yeah. he does stuff and says stuff his character is just so admirable what a, just guy. a, a really really lovely fella and yeah. you know what the loveliest, I think. I'm, I'm starting to become a real big fan of Ryan Gosling, which I always was. But oh, yeah, I'm yeah. Starting to just love that guy. Yeah. But he's much more bad boy. You know, Matt Damon is... Matt Damon is the... the, the yeah. He's the marry in the shag marry kill. Yeah, and sure. I th- that's it. And I think there are more... 
certainly Ryan Gosling will be more divisive. Like I feel like surely nobody, not everyone loves. Not yeah, everyone that's can, it. Whereas I feel Ryan like Gosling, there's but. nobody who knows Matt Damon's character, his person, either in interviews or whatever, who doesn't like him. Yeah, there can't be. There can't. There can't. They just someone. can't. Like it just does never done anything wrong. And, it, and like I say, I want to stress this. It's not like he's desperately trying to prove himself to be this super nice guy. That's partly what I like about him. No. Like you just can't not like him. He's just. Oh, what a, it's just, so, <laughs> just makes you feel all, all safe, doesn't he? Yeah. Makes you feel safe. Should we change our name to Matt Knight? <laughs> <laughs> just, just talk about Matt him all Knight. the time. Yeah, Matt Knight. All right, welcome back to Matt Knight, where we talk about Matt Damon. <laughs> <laughs> right, Matt Damon's good. Okay, sorry, right. Invictus. What, what, what are we talking about? We're talking about film. All right, so when we spoke about this before, <laughs> I retain my enjoyment, 7.0, Yes. A, a, a fine film, that. A very fine film. And what I liked most was the depiction of Mandela. It, it, it made me really interested in him as a character. Agreed. His actions and, and the, the moves that he made in order to sew up together South Africa. Very uh, shrewd, political, but also, also from a place of compassion. Yeah, it was in- interesting. Whenever you see people navigate the political space, they 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 leave their imprints, and his was so nurturing. Yes, it's just it, lovely to watch. Uh, Love Damon as well. I thought mm. his accent was great and beefy. Oh yeah, great beefed Ooh, up for it. Yeah, what a guy! Great shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> you know Staring him back over there. Quality shoulders. Sorry, continue. Matt, welcome to Matt Knight, where we're talking about <laughs> Damon's shoulders. Um, now we didn't love everything. Uh, the World Cup itself felt underutilized, not in the sense of they mentioned it all the fucking time. Yes, but the actual sporting moments. Yes. You're talking about one of the most exciting, dynamic, you know, uh, sporting events in yeah. wor- in in the world, and the conflict that they could have represented there felt a bit like a wet squib. Yeah, and I think Damn I know squib. what's happened here the is they've is, is they've I figured it out. They basically had to make a choice between really making the conflict, the narrative follow the fo- the rugby, the sport, or follow Mandela and his dangers. And the thing is, yes, it probably would have been a more interesting and entertaining film if they'd have gone down the route of the Rugby World Cup. Because mm. for those who haven't watched it, they really don't do anything. Like, it's such a good opportunity, is what Fred's saying, is there's so much opportunity for this amazing narrative around the route to success within the realms of the sport itself. And they just don't use it. But they do have narrative and conflict in there, but it's much more centered around the threat to Mandela's life and the threat to his political power and things like that, which I think does make a less enjoyable story to follow. But I certainly can see why they've done it. Mm, yeah. And you mentioned something really interesting about the the conflict, which I, I don't think we'd spoken about before, but it does actually feel like they've tried to to have their cake and eat it too. I don't fully understand that phrase. So in this case, right, they've got the Rugby World Cup. They've got Mandela's story, which yes. in and of itself is supposed to be interesting enough. But they, they've tried to use the Rugby World Cup element of his life. Yes. And what they're doing, instead of making it all about Mandela with just the Rugby World Cup as a side piece or all about the Rugby World Cup with Mandela's influence input. They've kind of tried to do both at the same time and it's diminished the returns of I both. understand. So yeah. they've, they've basically been like, we want this and we want this and, and it's both going to work rather than having any give and take. I, I think I would also go as far as to say I agree with that assessment. I, yeah. I, think, I do think that the Mandela story could have had much more to it. Hmm. Uh, and one of the things specifically as well is you did actually answer this for me a little bit, but I still couldn't get away from it emotionally was the whole, I guess the meeting point really between the two where with Mandela trying to uh, use his political power to achieve his truly compassionate aims hmm. with his uh tools being the rugby i didn't the narrative there didn't really make a lot of sense to me his plan it was just like oh i'm just gonna like inspire this 
underdog team to just win. That's my plan. Yeah. And it was like, well, if they'd have gone down a Mandela story route or they'd have gone down a rugby route, maybe there could have been some kind of actual material narrative that made sense there. Mm. Now, it, me- it felt good emotionally, but actually I was sat there for a lot of the film going like, what is he actually doing to like out- change the outcome here? Like, apart from just say like, I'm really behind you guys. Yeah, I think the only thing that is identifiable is the relationship with Pinar. <coughs> and how he tries to influence Pina's le- Pinar's leadership. Yeah. And yeah. that's about as much... And, and to be honest, they suggest Mandela had more of an influence on the outcome of the rugby by proxy in this than he did in real life. And they anyway. had to, because what influence could he have had? And which, I think that it represents the exact point you're making, which is like, they didn't really end up with a great rugby narrative and they didn't really end up with a really great Mandela narrative. They kind of just ended up with a sort of halfway between. And to extend that even more, we're talking about an incredibly tense political, tense and complex political situation post-apartheid. Yep. So, so the landscape within South Africa, within apartheid, and then... The, the dynamic racial events that were happening leading up to the desegregation and Mandela becoming a... Well, blacks having the right to vote, Mandela becoming a uh, the, the president. Mm. And then the aftermath of that and how they worked to the, the Rainbow Nation yes. ideal mm. is basically condensed... A, a, a very... Uh, politically a very charged piece of history yeah for say let's say 30 years worth yeah, yeah. beyond that and, and after that but let's say we're talking a 30 year period which they they breeze over they try and make a whole microcosm of this cause and resolution yeah. the rugby world cup which is very hollywood it's a very hollywood decision Completely now agree. if you it, look there's no issue with hollywood doing something like that that's that's kind no, of I what agree. they're there for I agree. and and you you can't make a, it's a story a 2 hour film that that encapsulates 30 years of history like that the only thing you would say is they if they're going to focus on one thing particularly it, it felt like they really did just go for kind of two yeah. large two areas rather than one I think it would have have scored better with the enjoyment if it had just tried to do one or the other. But I can see what they've tried to do. I just don't know if it's, you know, completely worked in that way. So I think we're talking about something that's supposed to be quite deep in meaning and theme. And it doesn't quite hit the mark enough for it to be a a standout film. So we've, we've said... Uh, a few different remarks and the one last thing that I really want to touch on which which you got very close to there was was the themes now one of the most standout things about this film was the character Mandela and its portrayal but certainly for me at least I felt like the presumably because it was a representation of Mandela Mm -hmm. the thematic messaging within this film felt nuanced and sophisticated and compassionate and smart in a way that I don't think Hollywood does very well these days. And I really enjoyed the thematic elements of this movie, which is not actually very normal for me. And I think that it is probably because the person who was leading this felt genuinely, truly compassionate about Mm. the people in the world around him. And it was so nice to see some, such a pure soul and not such a pure soul, but such a clear understanding of the need for good in the world that yeah. even though it would be just to take revenge, he just knows that we need to press on and get closer to net good as soon as we can. And that just felt genuinely refreshing for me thematically. And I felt I really appreciated that about this film. Yeah. And they did well to emphasize how he has, how his, um, temperament has been formed through year if through years of confinement terrible terrible stuff happening to him yeah, yeah and go full sail to now he's almost at he's almost a step above everyone in terms of he's just more enlightened exactly yeah, because he's gone through so much yeah such an unjust decision 
Yes. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know as much about his terrorist past. I know he, he was involved in, in plots that were, were overthrowing, but... It's unlikely he, got, he deserved the situation yeah, that he for, was in. for certain. And it got to a point where it was quite clear that in being confined for 27 years... You'd have a chip on your shoulder. Everyone would. And he, he was Madiba. He was... And, and I'll tell you what as well. The, the thing, one of the things that he claims got him through that made one of the most profound moments of the movie, which was when it read the poem... Mm. Now, I think that that could have gone terribly for me. I feel like that is the exact sort of scene that I could watch and be like, oh, this is really cringy and they've done mm. a terrible job of this. Especially a film that is so blatantly Hollywood where they've just, you know, just rugbified a, a, a story to make it more palatable. Right. And I think that that poem really landed it helped that it was a beautiful poem but just the presentation of it was outstanding that's interesting i actually am more in the camp that you describe if i felt they actually did less with what they had i, I yeah. think that poem is phenomenal it probably was partly the just the poem the poem's so good that you're like it's almost impossible for your reading of it not to be amazing and i was kind of like so that uh, oh, okay, we won't uh, ruin what happens, but they read the poem at one point in the film. Yeah. And I was a bit more in the camp of... They've I think there this. would have been a better way of doing this. Um, that poem, though, is so quality. Like, What's the story? You've given me the story, but what was it? So... Sorry, the story behind the poem, how the, it came to the life. The author, um, William Ernest Henley, is... He, he wrote it as a section of some of his some of his written works, which I think included other poems as well as maybe just some some writings. Uh, and it was on the back of him having a leg amputation due to tuberculosis compilation, uh, complications compilations of tuberculosis. <laughs> That's a bad compilation. And that at the time when he wrote it as well, so he had his leg amputated, and he also was staring down the barrel of having another amputation, which which didn't happen. Okay. And his poem was on the back of My Spirit is Indomitable. It's a very stoic sort of message. Oh, the poem, I mean, the story obviously adds so much weight to the poem itself, but the poem is quality. And the fact that Mandela found it and it became so inspirational to him within his confinement. The real Mandela. The real, yeah, you know, there is, they didn't just add this as a poem for the film. They, really, this was a massive inspiration to Mandela. Like, I just think that the actual, I've I've always loved, the first time I saw that, that poem, that the end where, I just read the last line, uh, or the last part, so it goes through a whole section of him just building himself up with rhyme, and then, it matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishments to scroll, I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. Like I, that makes me shiver. That, yeah. No, that, me too. Me that too. last we like the, the the encapsulation of just such a powerful moment in yeah. in that that little um, that rhyming couplet at the end. So yeah, awesome poem. Um, the guy himself obviously wrote it in in a time as similarly as dark to what Mandela went through, having leg amputation, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. almost a double leg amputation. Funnily enough, he was actually friends with Robert Louis Stevenson, who was the author of Treasure Island. Yeah, okay. That came out um, around that time. <laughs> in the that was late, a Nobel Prize winner, wasn't 19th it? 19th century. Well, I don't know. It might have been Nobel Prize for literature. <laughs> it's a great book. In the book, there is a um, character, Long John Silver. Yes. A one-legged pirate. Right. Who is uh, who's the influence of... Um, yeah. There you William go, Henley, Henley, which so is a very, nice. very cool bit of a uh, trivia for you there. That is a cool. That no, legitimately, that is fucking awesome. Yeah, it's That's cool. Such a cool little like tip the hat to the mate. Yeah, and yeah obviously, yeah. this. I mean, I don't know much about this guy. I know one of his poems, but <laughs> based on what he wrote, probably a pretty nice guy. Yeah, yeah, it must be like, nice guy. Have, I mean, it's so it, the, the the admiration that you have, you just have to have for it, the people who have that much control over their of their emotion, their reactions to, to yeah. what is, like, blatant injustice in any mm. situation, be it Mandela's or the original authors or any of the people. You hear stories about people uh, from the Holocaust who had similar attitudes of, like, you can do whatever you want, but you can't make me 
feel a certain you can't make me you know i am still in charge of the way that i react and the way that i feel mm. it's just you just can't help but respect it and oh. then to put it so beautifully and then to have morgan freeman read it to me oh yeah and i mean come on <laughs> and he's remembered it um I've seen interviews with him after. He he like me- has memorized, memorized the poem. Yeah, it's very yeah. cool. He ever the professional. He here's a fun little fact which uh, Fred thought was funny. Uh, <laughs> Morgan Freeman learned to write with his right hand to yeah. better represent Mandela. Completely unnecessary. <laughs> right with my right hand. No okay, way. but let me put it to you this way. Yes, I agree. It seems superfluous, but <laughs> the. Uh, it does represent his willingness to just completely commit to the craft and just say, I'm just going to do sure. anything and everything to just better represent this person. It's not like he's just learned his lines and turned up on the day. Like, he's taking it seriously. I get it's probably that. not the only thing he's done. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's just, it's just the, a bit ridiculous. The most useless thing. <laughs> Nobody knows what... I'm sure he did the- other stuff, and it's a shame he told anyone about that one. Because it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's I hope he did other stuff. Because if all he did in preparation <laughs> that was, it, that was, was learn to write with his wrong hands. <laughs> He did not do it for that film. So, He's always wanted to. Just to round off then, because I know we went on yes. kind of tangents, which were really interesting things to talk about, obviously. The story itself is is interesting. In my opinion, bit off a bit more than it can chew unnecessarily. Mm-hmm. Great performances from the two leads. Yeah. And the subject matter is such that you can't help but want to learn more about that period of history. However, the messaging itself felt like it missed the mark somewhat, somewhat because of the setting, somewhat because it's condensing a very charged period of history. Uh, And finally, the actual rugby, things like the rugby and, and... the soundtrack, <laughs> which we won't go into. Well, yeah. If you're on the long form, you'll hear us when when we're when we're working through the main eye machine. There's there's a couple of moments in the soundtrack that are one of the few like, noticeably bad sounds. Yeah, you know, it, it just uh, music for film done poorly is quite rare. <laughs> yeah, and this is one of those examples. This one, this is one I won't be forgetting. That's for sure. There was a, there was a song. There was a very specific song they chose that I was just like, that is atrocious. It is aged absolutely <laughs> terribly. For those who have watched the film and are curious what I'm talking about, it's the scene where uh, Mandela gets out of the helicopter uh, to go and basically tell all the rugby team that he knows all their names, and he gets a hat in exchange. During that scene, there is a song that is played which is just atrocious. It's an yeah. insult to have to listen to it, and neither of us could quite believe what we were listening to when it happened. So, but there you go. Like these things happen. On on the whole, seven point eight, seven point oh, right? That was mm. what we gave. And it. we're about to find out. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to go into the main night machine room to beep find beep out beep what beep. the real oracle the main night ai yeah the machine we're gonna we're gonna what we're gonna do fred we're gonna twiddle some knobs we're gonna press some buttons much less adventurous much less adventurous yeah well previously you've come out with some much more interesting things to do with that machine my go-to twiddling knobs yeah. pressing buttons pull some le- levers okay now we're talking yeah, yeah we're, gonna, okay. we're gonna punch some digits yeah we're gonna break some knuckles whack a few moles I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kick a pole with my shin. Yes, Ooh. and then that will leave us with the final main eye score. In undisputable, might I add, undeniable. Although subject to change, I think. Okay, cool. <laughs> so, nice <laughs> um, we will see you guys back here in uh, a few moments. Whoa, that oh, was, right, was that. that. Yeah, right, was okay. That. okay, we're back. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, back in the room. Back what, in the room, ladies and gentlemen. What a journey. We've been through time and space, and all we have seen is numbers and that figures. That like, machine is really Neo's something, man. The Matrix, we're just in lines and, and digits. And, and it exists and doesn't exist and whilst we're not and in the room. And there's, and there's like some, some, some overweight, hairless man in a corner going, yes. Whoa! Yes, <laughs> there must. Yes, I must have missed him. But I take you it. miss him? I take it. That's true. <laughs> I can't see. <laughs> okay, yeah. so uh, we have got a number to rate this film out of ten, once and for all. Invictus, two thousand and nine, starring Morgan Freeman and mm-hmm. Matt Damon. It has been given 
6.87 out of 10, making it the 27th greatest film of all time. Until further notice. But for reference, since we've only managed to do about 40, that puts it uh, just below the fifth... Mm, bottom third. About bottom third. Yeah. Top of the bottom third. If that makes any sense whatsoever. Uh, if you're interested, which you probably aren't because I've already told you this in the last episode, but that actually gave it the uh, exact same score. Can you remember what the film was? Well, didn't we change one of the scores on here? Did we Did we change two scores? Did one go up, one go down? Could have been. What do you mean changing scores? Well, well, do you mean twiddled some different <laughs> Sorry, levers? Did we, did, we, um, did we reconfigure the aspect <laughs> ratio and the hyperdrive? On this one? Um, <laughs> nice. Uh, oh, God, yeah, what was it? No, no, it's not coming back to me. I'll just it is dead air. Where's balls? Kingdom oh, of the Planets yeah. of the Apes, of the Planet baby. Of the Apes. I'm yeah. kind of happy with that. Both very kind of Hollywoody for me a little I like, bit. I, like yeah, I liked him. I liked him. Of course we like it. Do you have to watch it? No. Nah. Should you watch it? No. What? Can you watch it? Yeah. <laughs> you can. If it's below yeah. six, you can't you watch have it. Have permission from Matt Knight. <laughs> <laughs> from Matt Damon Knight. Uh, yeah, I, I. You know what? It was. It, it was a way to spend two hours, and it mm. could have been worse. Could have been better. Yes. You know, we both took something from it, which is. Which is that Nelson Mandela is a pretty cool guy. Top bloke. Right. Yeah. Thank you so much for listening, everybody. We really genuinely appreciate it, and we uh, look forward to seeing you in the next one. Cheers. <laughs>